Hello, Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for Yona of the Dawn, Chapter 227. Uh, when we last left our heroes, uh, we spent a bit of time in the aftermath of Yona and Hawk's little night together that didn't really result in much beyond Hawk being put back on bed rest. Uh, but we spent a little bit more time dealing, you know, just sitting in the aftermath of the battle. Uh, as we get some narration, the battle is over. Uh, Koka sort of expelled Kai from Keen Province, but they had to sort of sit there because, you know, there's no ceasefire and Kai could return at any time. But with that said, we leave them there to head back to Kudo with Yoon and Maynion. Uh, and then Maynion sort of forces Yoon and also Hugh Reed to take her, like, out on the town while Yoon... <coughs> Sorry, my sinuses are going to clog for some reason. Uh, while Yoon does some, like, medical shopping. Uh, they run into Lily, Ayora, and Taitora... And they all head to Ogi's place to find out about the outcome of the battle. They find out that Koka won, but they're still sort of stuck there at a bit of a, an impasse. Um, and after, you know, Maynion gets real drunk and hangs out with Ayora and Totora for a while, uh, Yoon and Huri take her home. But on the way uh, back to, to the castle, they run right into Vol. Uh, who, after a brief little standoff, declares that he is going to take Maynion home, back to South Kai, and Choggle, no matter what she does. Uh, so yeah, with that said, let's dive right on into chapter 227, Squirmings of the Dead of Night. And our picture here is a bloodied and dirtied up, uh, probably teenaged Maynion and Vol. We fought and got hurt together. These days are so far away now. Chapter 227, Squirmings in the Dead of Night. Um, we, we open where we left off uh, with Maynion reacting to what Vala said. No, I'll never go back to South Kai again. Uh, and Yoon runs to him. Let Maynion go. Uh, but Maynion calls back. Yoon, stay away. Uh, but Yoon refuses. Maynion is, my, Maynion is my patient. I can't leave her alone. Uh, and Val looks at him. A patient? I guess not knowing about Maynion's illness, maybe? Uh, as, as Yoon worries, that's not good. Maignan's crimson illness is top secret. Uh, but Maignan plays it off. Yoon tended to my injuries. And then, then he turns back to Val. Oh, I see. You were under his care. Uh, and Yoon is sort of, like, questioning Val. Hmm? This guy seems pretty normal? Which, like, yeah, Val is one of the more normal members of the Eight Generals. Uh, but then Val goes on, I'll be the one to look after her now. And that enrages Maignan, who just decks him from below. Uh, and Val just wonders, hey. Uh, and and Maignan just snaps, what do you mean you'll look after me? Don't screw with me. If I went back, what kind of look would I receive? I guess from, from Choggle she's talking about. Uh, the like look of utter disdain that Choggle would inevitably give her. Um, mm. But Val's eyes just widen as Maynion runs off, Yoon chasing after her. Uh, and Yoon calls out to her, Ugh, What are we going to do? For now, if we, if we return to the castle, he won't be able to pursue us. Uh, but Maynion then adds in, If I return to South Kai, I will be tortured and killed. Which I don't think Yoon knew about. because uh, he's, he's just stunned. No way. But that guy just now is an acquaintance, right? Yes. But he's an enemy now. He doesn't care about what happens to me. So we see at this point, though, you know, there's not a whole lot of, like, of, like, wondering what side Maynon is on. She might not be really pro Coca, but she's very anti Choggle because she thinks that, that Choggle will kill her if she goes home, which, like, he very well might. He's kind of an ass. Um, but just then, Lily and the gang swoop, swoop in. She hasn't, like, gone home yet. Yoon? You, you didn't go home? Uh, and you note, sir. Oh, you neither, Lily. I felt anxious about what Ogie said earlier, so we went patrolling. And then we noticed something strange. Referring to what Ogie said about, like, weird incidents. Uh, guards getting drunk or falling into rivers and dying. Uh, and you questioned something strange. There's really no palace guards patrolling, and it's frightfully quiet. Uh, and Yoon thinks, now that you mention it. And yeah, there is this odd air of, like, stillness around, the, around where they are. I didn't really point that out. Amidst all of, like, the, the panic of Val's appearance. Uh, but the way this is framed, I'm curious if it... Like, my initial reading is that the stuff Ogi was talking about was Val's doing. 
But something about the way this is framed is making me think that it's not Vols doing. That there's someone else doing things in Kudo right now that could be a threat. I don't know. Um, uh, so, so Yoon comments, now that you mention it, and Lily goes on, it's rather eerie. I wanted to see someone from the castle, but right now neither His Majesty nor General Judo are there, right? Uh, and Yoon, Yoon sort of comments, there are still guards. Let's go ask them. I guess there are some guards somewhere. Uh, and Main Yan looks around, thinking of Hugh Ree. Where did the old man go? Isn't he supposed to keep an eye on me? Which actually, not to mention it, there was something in the way, the last we saw of Hugh Ree, he was shocked right before Vol showed up. But, like, Vol's appearance, I don't think, would have caused that kind of utter shock. Which makes me think there's something else at play here, beyond just Vol. And there's this swish noise that freezes Mignon. Um, and there's just a shadowy figure off down the alleyway. Uh, and you notes him, someone's here. And whoever it is must be someone Mignon knows, because she's panicked. Oh, no. We're getting out of here. And she drags you and just books it. Huh? What? I uh, mean, Yon tells them, hurry up. Dangerous guys are coming into Kudo. Uh, and Yoon questions, dangerous guys? A group of South Kai assassins. The Dromos. And one appears right above, May like standing on Main Yon's shoulders. He's just like, I love the creep factor here. And I think we might have briefly seen these guys before. I have a vague memory of them, um, but I might just be imagining things. Um, but yeah, they're not Vol. I don't know if Vol even knows that they're here. I don't quite remember. Uh, but the Dromos guy on Mainyan just whispers, Princess, Princess Mainyan, how far will you go? Which, like, there, there's some absolute, like, you know, sinisterness in dubbing Mignon princess here. Given that her, her relation to Chagol is, like, the thing that she's been chafing under. Like, there's some, some real little, like, you know, that, that word is an insult here, it feels like. His Majesty Chagol is waiting. And Mignon is just frozen in fear. That's returned to South Kai. And Mignon just thinks, my body won't move. This is the end. I'm dead. Uh, and is that Tetora or Ayora? I always forget which. Um, it's Ayora, who just slashes at the Dromos guy. Uh, he backs off Mignon. And Ayora also joins in. Yeah, And kicks at him, but he still jumps out of the way. Uh, and the, the guy lands, and Yoon comes to her. Mignon, are you alright? Uh, and Mignon is still just frozen. And Lily looks out, what? A group of assassins from South Kai? And Ayora just comments, it seems the most outrageous people you can possibly imagine infiltrated this place. Which, like, yeah, given that he just, like, stood on her, like, a full-grown man stood on her, sh stood on her shoulders, is, that's, that's kind of weird, I'm not gonna lie. Um, and then I think this is Ayora still. You said group, so it's not just this guy, but Minyan just finally comes to herself and calls... He's coming! Uh, and there's two of them who are rushing at them. And Mignon steals Tetora's... Or your... No. Uh, this is... Fuck, I, I got them confused again. Um, Ayora's sword. Uh, I got them confused a bit earlier. But she steals Ayora's sword. Lend me your sword. And just slashes at the guy. But the guy just keeps... Like, he's like a ghost, it almost feels like. Dodging and, like, weaving past all of Mignon's slashes. Uh, but he, she finally almost hits him. He basically deflects it off his, like, little metal, like, gra glaives? No, not glaives. Um, metal glove things. I forget what they're called. And he jumps back and just sort of teases, Princess, cease your caprice. And caprice, I definitely, like, heard capricious before. I forget the actual definition of caprice. Uh, a sudden and unaccountable change of mood or behavior. So he's calling her, like, emotional. Uh, like... Very, like, shifting emotions. Not just, like, you know, lashing out or, or, um, um, fuck, what's the word? Or, like, just sort of angry, but, like, implying that her emotions are shifting. Which I don't really see as being a thing, unless she, like, puts on this very sort of, like, pretty act for Choggle 
so Chaco doesn't kill her or something. Uh, <coughs> uh, and Ayora backs her up. I'll back you up. Uh, I, I, okay, I stole that line. I'm sorry. Uh, but Mignon tells her, no, take Yun, with, take Yun with you and run. These guys mercilessly kill women and children. Take Yun with you while I hold them back. Uh, and Yun calls out, Mignon, I absolutely don't want to go back, nor do I want to die. But before that, I'll protect Yoon. Okay, that's not a vibe from Main Yan I had really had before this. That she's like, I guess Yoon has taken good care of her over the past couple weeks, I guess. Uh, and like, that's showing itself as loyalty here. She is going to back him at this point, no matter, like, that's her, her little savior, Yoon. Uh, and she's loyal. There, there's a loyalty here I don't think we've really seen from Main Yan before, which is interesting. And she at the, lunges at the Dromos guy. Shit. Come back to me, my, my battle instincts. And then Vol interrupts them. Wait. Uh, and Mignon looks up at him. Vol. And the, the, the Kokens are all sort of stunned at his appearance. And Vol chastises the assassin. What are you doing? Do you intend to hurt Lady Mignon? I'm the one giving the orders. Leave this to me. Oh, so I think that is when we saw the, the Dromos before, with, in a scene with Vol planning for the mission to Kudo. Uh, and the Dromos guy acknowledges Vol and steps back. And he, tur- he like sighs, a, sighs, sighs in relief and turns back toward Mignon. Hey, you. And Mignon just draws her knife on him. Um, uh, Vol blocks it with his hilt. But Mignon is not letting, go- letting up. Hey, stop this. I don't feel like fighting. Uh, Mignon does not care. We're gonna have to fight anyway, aren't we? I can't believe the Dromos are even here. If you're gonna harm you, and I won't go, go easy, even on you. Uh, but Vol just tells her, it is my job to bring you back. The rest doesn't matter. And he, like, with his blade, smacks her sword away from her. And it lands, or he, la- he slams his blade as Mignon falls over. Uh, and, like, stabs her, his blade into her robe, stopping her from moving. Uh, like, he's now leaning over her as Mignon just questions, why won't you back off? Uh, but Vol just tells her, people are suspecting that you're leaking, that you're leaking information about South Kai. Uh, and Mignon just tells him, I don't possess any significant intel. Then let's clear these suspicions so you don't receive any punishment. I'll admonish his majesty. Uh, and Mignon, not, you know, having no faith that Chago will go that easy on her, just questions, who do you think you'll be talking to? His majesty simply won't forgive me for escaping from his grasp. Uh, so yeah, Vol, Vol and Mignon see the issue very differently. You know, Vol is just, I guess almost taking Chagol at his word, but like he just wants Mignon back. Whereas Mignon sees Chagol as just going to be utterly outraged that Mignon was even out of his grasp for a little while and will swear vengeance on her. Just kill her right then and there. Uh, but Vol questions Why did you go to here, you castle? It's not like you have any family ties or connection there um, And Mignon just tells him I do My father was from Coca And throughout this whole scene Ho is like jumping across Mignon's robes And over to Vol's back My father was from Coca And I'm probably going to die soon that's why I wanted to be free before I die. Leaving out why she's going to die soon. She's still hiding that information from him. This is all I can say. Uh, and Vol is just, wait, you, this is, I'm sure it's whatever to you, but please, let me die in peace. And Vol, like, his eyes sort of shadow in response to that. Uh, and then Tatora comes over. Uh, hmm. Sorry to interrupt you in the middle of your talk. This is a very complex situation, but after hearing your story, I think I have a rough idea of what's going on. My name is Tatora. Sir, your name is Vol, is that right? Might you be the other party in Miss Mignon's puppy love <laughs> that she confessed to while she was drunk from last chapter? Good shit, Tatora. Uh, don't know where you're going with this, but good shit. And Vol is just stunned, huh? Both Vol and Mignon give this, like, look up to Tora, like, what the fuck? And uh, Mignon is just, hey, what are you? Oh, you said it, didn't you? During our love talk, you were like, Vol, you idiot! 
And Ball is just standing there, really confused at the turn this conversation has taken. And Min Yan lashes onto Totoro. Hey, you! If you're going to shake things up... No, if you're going to speak frank... Oh, no, this is uh, Totoro's line. If you're going to shake things up... No, if you're going to speak frankly, it should be fine to say at least this much. So that there's no uneasiness left. And that, like, calms Min Yan's rage for a bit. And she turns back to Vol on the verge of tears. Stunning Vol. Um... And Yoon calls out, look, what's going on with the sky over there? It's red. Oh, this was the other part of, of Chagol's plan, burning Kudo to the ground. As Lily notes, a fire. What? Uh, and Ayora comments, the city is burning. Uh, and Lily runs after, runs to the fire. Uh, Ayora right behind her. Satora calls, Lady Lily. And then we, we linger a moment more. I'm Mignon and Ball, dealing with what Satora just dropped on them. Um, and and Mignon then says, please say something. And all he can really mutter is, too much information. And Mignon just grabs him, you bastard! You got nothing better to say after all the embarrassment you've caused me? Uh, and Ball just comments, no, there's a lot to say, I guess. It's more complicated than you think. Frankly, this is annoying. As I thought, it would be better to be sent on the battlefield. And Mignon just snaps. What did you say? You suddenly become His Majesty's concubine. You suddenly go to Coca as an emissary and don't come back. You suddenly cut your hair short and are suddenly talking about me. What's that about? So actually, how recent has it been since Mignon became a concubine? You know? Because uh, like the way he says it, it feels like all these events happened in a very short span of time. Like, beyond the concubine stuff, the emissary, the hair, the, the haircut, talking about Vol, that's all, like, within the span of a week or two tops. Was the concubine thing also fairly recent? I don't know. I've never quite been sure on that, on that front. Um, mm. But Mignon just tells him, shut up. Don't say it. But Vol goes on, but you, you look like you were delighted when you became a concubine. Uh, and Mignon responds, that's because if I go up in ranks, that increases my chances to meet with Suwon. And Vol, who doesn't quite know what the deal is with Suwon here, why well, Suwon? So there's, some, so there's still something she's not telling me. Uh, and Mignon pauses for a moment, gets a little bit more sympathetic of Vol's plight here. If you don't bring me back, you will be punished. Even though I'm aware of that, I still intend to run away. That's why, Vol, don't do anything for me either. Either way, the annoying woman that I am will leave your life. With this, I bid you farewell. Uh, okay. So she's just trying to, like, cut ties here. Maybe if she cuts ties, that, like, Vol won't... You know, Vol joins her, which maybe on some level she wants to happen, if her, her drunken story with Totora is anything to go by. Um, then, like, Vol will also be complicit... Ah, sorry, my voice cracked. I don't know why my voice has been cracking the past couple weeks. Um, like, I'm not 14 anymore. <laughs> Tonight, my, my sinuses are just fucking fucked up. But anyway, um, where was I? If, if, if she wants him, to come with, come, wants him to come with her, then that would sort of fuck up Val's life. And maybe he can salvage something if he just goes back to Kai in failure. Maybe not, though, because, you know, Chuggle being who Chuggle is. Um... But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It feels like she is trying to like give him an out in some way. Um, and Yoon calls back to her, Mignon, the fire! And we hear like the townspeople, fire! Fire! Wah! And then the assassin speaks, General Val, the palace guards are moving to extinguish the fires in the city. We will take advantage of the confusion to penetrate here, you castle. Bring the princess and come with us. Uh, so, you know, Dromos is not going to let Vol just let Mignon go. Uh, but Yoon questions, here you castle. What are you doing? Uh, and the assassin looks at him and just gives a shush. You will see it a little bit. Uh, and Yoon runs. I must inform the palace guards. Uh, and Dromos lands behind him. <coughs> uh, and Mignon lunges. What are you doing to Yoon, you bastard? And she, like, grabs her sword and is flying at Dromos. Excuse my impoliteness, princess. I was told by his majesty that it was fine if I only cut your legs. 
and he he turns on Manion now. Uh, and Vol then turns on him, choosing to side with Manion against Kai, which is sort of where his arc has been going, what little we've seen of it for his whole whole appearance here. And he knocks the assassin back. He still lands on his feet. Uh, and just sort of teases, oh. And we cut to Vol, who's just shit. His body and his heart moved. Continues the issue 16, July 20th. Okay, so, tons of fun stuff here. Uh, this is really just the Manion and Ball show. There's other people here, the Lily Gang, Yoon, the Assassin. Um, mm. But when it comes to who this whole chapter is about, it's about Vol's turn. You know, we've seen little hints of the sort of, like, young friendship romance thing that Manion and Vol had growing up. Uh, and I, a part of me does wish we had sort of seen more of it. You know, my, my real issue here is that, like, I think I would have liked it. I think it, I'm not saying we... Mm, words, 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 words. So, what I think I'm getting at is that, like, we didn't need more Vol backstory. And I see the way the backstory is going to absolutely derail a series. Here's looking at you, Butler. Um... But, like, the way this ending is framed, where, like, Vol's betrayal of the assassin feels like the culmination of, like, a character arc, would have worked maybe a little bit better if we had seen more of that character arc, rather than just, you know, what little we've seen of Vol has largely been through Manion's eyes, so we don't really get to see his inner struggle, we have to kind of infer it. Like, it works in the end. Vol is not an important enough character that we need that much. And, like, it's not, like, like it's been fairly well established that his loyalty is not really to Choggle, that he cares more for Manion than he does about Kai or Choggle. Well, he does, you know, he's not, like, actively seeking to, like, undermine Choggle on Manion's behalf or something, but, like, he has a personal connection to Manion, and he cares more about that, I think, than he does Kai, I think, has already been pretty well established. Um, and so his, his final beat here, where he, you know, betrays the assassin and guards... Mayan definitely works. And I love the fact that, like, you know, I love his last little shit as he's like, you know, he didn't, not even, not even, uh, Vol really expected that move. He was not expecting to betray his boss there. He just kind of did that. And now he's stuck dealing with that. He's, you know, assuming his assassin, um, and all the Dromos guys don't die here, Vol is going to be a traitor. You know? That word is going to get back to, to Choggle, and Vol will be a traitor to Kai. And also an enemy of Koka. So he's, you know, in his, in his, in his love for Manion, which I think is the best way to read what he feels for Manion, he has ended up leaving himself kind of stateless. You know? He has no empire to return to. He has no kingdom that will welcome him with open arms. Even Manion, who, like, has... Like, you know, Manion is can't even really, <coughs> excuse me, uh, like, not even Mignon could give him that position in Coca, because Mignon isn't even really well liked in Coca. She's just kind of there. Um, but yeah, uh, so, or there might not be the best word, but my, my scientists are fucking up, and I don't like talking right now, but I'm still doing it. I'm still doing that. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know. I also like the bits we see of, of Manion in this chapter. Like, there's a, like I said before, there's a loyalty to her with Yoon uh, that I don't think we've really seen before now. You know, the idea that she's really loyal to anyone is kind of new. Uh, but, like, Yoon, above everyone in Coca, cared for her, tended to her, helped her out, and she's repaying that favor. You know, good on her. Good, good on her for repaying that favor. She's protecting Yoon to the end against, uh... <coughs> Against the... <coughs> fuck my fucking nose. Completely <coughs> out of it. Fucking hell. Anyway. Um, she's going to repay that favor until the end there. Um, so yeah, this is really the Mignon and Vol chapter. We see a bit more of like Vol's feelings for, for Mignon. Both conscious and unconscious as that final blast shows. Uh, and Mignon, sort of these feelings of loyalty towards, uh, towards Yoon, and also the kind of romantic feelings she expressed while drunk to Tatora about Vol, 
are now being expressed kind of sober. Um, or like, a little sober. It hasn't been long since, like, she was drunk, but also she did get chased by an assassin a couple times, so it is understandable. Um, but yeah, now Dromos is trying to do something to hear you castle, uh, burn it down, I think. But Vol has ended up turning on them in defense of Maignan, and, uh, <coughs> you know, I doubt that's gonna go well for him politically, uh, we'll see how well it goes for him personally sometime in a couple weeks from now. Uh, but for now, I'm going to leave this video off here. Hope you all enjoyed the chapter and the video itself. If you did, feel free to drop me a like or subscribe or, you know, do whatever makes you happy, you know? And as always, your life is your own, okay? Bye!